Okay, Coach, if you want to start. Yeah, we were deeply inspired by our football team's uh, defensive stand on the goal line and decided we wanted to, um, you know, make this a defensive game and don't worry about making shots tonight. And, and uh, I thought our guys in the second half did a really good job of guarding and rebounding. And so, um, you know, I, I think I need to have Will Howard come in and let them know that, that they have some offense too. So maybe we'll have some better offense uh, against Abilene Christian. Uh, Coach, just what was your message to your team throughout the game as, as they were struggling to hit shots? Yeah, just keep grinding, keep grinding. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, shots, they're going to go in at some point in time, you know, but if we kept defending and we kept attacking the paint, uh, I thought every time we got a, a paint touch, something good happened and we didn't need to settle for shots. And I know there were open shots, but that's exactly what they wanted us to do. And uh, we needed to impose our will on them and keep attacking the paint. You mentioned your defense. What did you feel like your defense did particularly well today? I thought in the second half, we contested shots and that we had the right people shooting, right? We took away the ones we wanted to take away and then we rebounded the basketball. You mentioned the football team. Uh, what was it like uh, just having the opportunity to watch the game with your team and then have the, you know, the crowd here tonight? Well, hey, this is the second year in a row I've sat in the locker room before a game, right? And, uh, and we was actually getting ready to go play last year when Baylor had to get four stops on, you know, his first and goal from the two-yard line. And so um, – that was really cool. I remember being, I, and I love college football, so, and I don't like to be around other people when I'm watching it, right? But this one, we, we had shoot around, we went in, and uh, we thought we watched the last minute of it. Well, it went to overtime. We were like, oh, crap, we can't watch overtime. We gotta watch film. We have to, you know, do our thing. And, and then we was like, ah, oh, screw it. We're gonna watch it. And uh, we watched the overtime, and they were in there, and, and we were all together, and it was just a, a great experience, man, because you know how hard, uh, these coaches work, right? It, I mean, it took us, when I was at Baylor, it took us 18 years to win a Big 12 championship. I, I, I honestly wanted to win, there was a part of me that wanted to win a Big 12 championship more than winning a national championship, right? If you'd asked me to pick one to two before. And uh, like, the, what it means, like, that means that like you have grinded for a whole season and you faced everyone. And, and then you, in their case, they faced someone twice and, and, and you, you win, man, that, that's, there's like nothing like it, right? Win the Big 12 championship. And so I was so happy for them because I know all the work that the staff put in and the players put in. And, you know, you're thinking on the goal line, you know, right? It, that, that's like a strength coach win, right? Like all those sprints in the summer and all the weightlifting and the tire flips and the, the competitive drills and everything. It's like, dude, we got, you know, inches, and then the other team is like, it's all their summer work to get, right? And, and, and to come through in that moment, man, it's just such a, a, a culture program win. And um, I, I actually had tears because uh, I was so happy for them and because and I, I understand how hard you have to work to get it. And so just couldn't be prouder to be a part of this. Coach, put aside what football did. I mean, the crowd tonight was just awesome with it being, you know, a local in-state game. I mean, is this something that you would want to schedule in the coming years against, you know, regional opponents? Um, yeah, I, I tried to, like, do a little research on the history of it. And so I understood we used to play each other all the time. And then at some point in time, you know, one team – got better than the other team so the coaches didn't want to play and then when it flip-flopped the coaches didn't want to play and um you know I, i'm not going to sit up here and say we're definitely going to do this forever after this time is over we're going to look at it and see um based on the net and everything else that goes on what is the best to give us the best position you know to have the type of schedule or the strength of schedule that, uh, you know, gives us the best chance to go to the NCAA tournament and have a high seed in the NCAA tournament. And so, you know, I don't think a team higher than third or maybe one time a team higher than a three seed has ever won a national championship. And so um, that's going to be my thinking once this thing is over. And then Marquise Noel with a minute remaining hits that big three-pointer. How big was that? That was huge, huge. And, I mean, he is such a competitive kid, you know, and um, we've talked about what kind of shots we want him to take. 
And uh, I thought all of his shots tonight were quality shots, you know, inside out threes. And it just wasn't falling tonight, but you knew he was going to make a big play, whether it was on the defensive end, on the offensive end, he was going to make a big play. And uh, I just, you know, I, I'm glad he's on our team. Did you know he, uh, last year in Wichita, hit the game, the dagger just like he did tonight uh, from the, around the same spot as well? No, I, yeah. I, I, didn't, so I, did, I didn't. Two hurt. years in a row, he put the dagger in Wichita wow. State. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a, like, in big moments, he wants it, right? He wants it. And so you, you, you have to you appreciate that. Not everybody wants it in big moments. And, and he took the right one, right, today. And that was good. So you had the grind it out game against Nevada that you won, the one against TCU, and then uh, uh, almost you know come back against Butler when not a lot was going right, and then another grind out game tonight. What what do you speak on the resilience of your team? You know from the jump of this season, showing that they can get down a little bit, but they will fight back. You spoke about it against Southern Illinois in the secret scrimmage before the season that they mm -hmm. went through that same adversity. What's it like to see your team fight through that this early in the season? You know, I think it's like just the makeup of our staff too, right? We got staff and, and everybody involved in the program. We were just like, we just scrap and claw for everything. And, and we've gotten where we're at because of hard work. And, and we, we want our players to, to understand that. that and, and this thing's a fight, right? It's, it's never easy. Right? The other team practices hard and, you know, they have a game plan too. And uh, so... You know, you have to have that, that fight and understand that um, you're, it, if you let up, you're going to lose, right? And the, the no let up is what allows us to continue to stay in things. And then at some point in time, you're going to get a break here or there. And we always say whoever plays the hardest gets the luckiest. And I thought that was true tonight. And then Naquan Tomlin has two rough games in a row and then comes back with a 14-point game. How big was this? this game for him huge we, we challenged him man you know uh junior college guys normally take a semester to adjust right and he came out the gates pretty fast and I think he thought it was going to be easy right oh man you know and and what you don't understand is the other team does scouting reports and you went from like being down low on the scouting report to up high on the scouting report and now there's more attention paid to you and and so you got to keep getting better and you have to keep working you have to keep working i i think he kind of took a little break there and so we challenged him and i was very happy with how he responded tonight now i don't need him to be happy because he had a good game i need him to realize that he had a good game because he worked and continued to work and last one for me cam carter you know he was missing shots all game but then hits a big one late Exactly. Right? And, yeah. I mean, he's worked really hard on it. The, um, you know, Cam, uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's a special kid because he doesn't, like, let, like, one mistake lead to two. He has a real knack for just forgetting what happens, so he doesn't remember the other stuff, and that's going to make him a really good player moving forward. And, and I'm just thankful that his hard work is paying off for him. Coach, how much does your experience, you guys' experience help uh, in a game like tonight, just finishing the game? And, um, All and these experiences minutes. are going to help us, mm -hmm. right? Like, you never want to put yourself in these situations. I mean, I wish we didn't give up 55% shooting in the first half, you know, when we're in front of our bench and we're calling out what's going on, you know. And, uh, but the bright side of that is that we held them to 26% in the second half when they were away from us. So that means they were talking to each other and they were figuring it out on that end. And so we have made, early in the year, we had games where we played good defense in the first half and then let up in the second half. And so I've said all along, we'll build into where we can put 30 to 35 minutes together that, are, that we do it the right way. And, and you have to do that to give yourself a chance to win in the Big 12. What have you learned? You guys have had a few get really close games early. What have you learned about your team uh, this past week? Um, you know, that they trust us, so they do what we ask them to do in those situations. Um, they are figuring out um, how they can each help each other uh, in, in those tough situations. And, and I love how they come together, right? Like, like there were times in the huddle after I said what I said that you saw them, like, gather together, and they were all, like, their focus and they and you know what they were saying in that huddle was the right things 
right, even when we were out of there. And so I, I, I like the leadership that we have. Yeah, Coach, uh, you know, which I'll say they run so many ball screens. Can you explain the importance of, of what coverage you guys ran and just what you guys did to, to kind of stall them out there, especially the second half? You know, I, I really think that they did that to slow the pace. You know, like the, like they they're one of the slowest paced teams in the country, and they they use their defense to slow you down because of the press and the zone. And then on offense, they really just want to boil it down till they get the mismatch they want to try and take advantage. And and I think Naquan Tomlin and and David Gasson, um, both of those guys can switch a ball screen and guard a guard. And um, even when number three uh, Porter when he hit the couple mid-range shots, that's exactly what we want. It's a 27% shot, right? And so he's going to make a couple of them, but if over the course of the year, if we make guards shoot tough contested twos, we're going to be all right. It's the rhythm three that he hit in the first half, right? That's the ones that we can't give up, and so. Coach, over the last couple days after the loss, how did your team respond, do you think? I thought they did a really good job. I thought our, first of all, I thought our staff responded well. I thought we got together and we looked at ourselves and said, what, we, what could we do better, differently? What is it that we did too much of or not enough of? And we put a plan together. We stood in front of the team and told them we have to do a better job as a staff and these are the changes we're going to make to help us with travel and everything. And now this is the changes we need you to make. And so we ask everyone in the program to look at it look at the game first and say, what can I do to improve for our team, right? And to help our team to win. And before you start like trying to point the finger at other people or, or we need this and that and the other. And I think they did a really good job of that. They responded well in practice. They were competitive. And, um, and so we're getting a little bit better every day. Do you have an injury update on Bebe? Both Bebe and Ish are day-to-day. -day. Yeah, um, I, I don't know the the technical terms of it. No, I don't. Do I know if I'm allowed to even talk about it? I just know that uh, when they are ready, because they both want to play, right? They they don't want to be in boots right now. They they want to be on the court with their brothers and and give us the best chance to win. And they're doing everything that they can to get back. And and as soon as they get cleared, you know, they're they're going to be out there on the floor. And but that's all I know. Talk about the um, the early season success from the the three high school signees that you you have, uh, uh, McCaleb, uh, Day Day Ames, and uh, R J Jones. Yeah, Day Day had a a big opening night, had thirty points and a win, and uh, he's got a young team. They're talented, but it, it's great because he's getting a lot of leadership there. And you know, every scouting report is going to be to stop him and. And the fact that he can go out and, and do that, and he was really efficient. And then RJ had two really good games against really good teams. And last night I got to be there and watch him make go seven for ten from three. And so that that was exciting to see him and and stuff. So a, a lot a lot of fun. And McCaleb, man, he had a game winner in their second game. Grabbed the rebound, went the length of the court, and and so I'm really really proud of those dudes. I mean, we we have three really good players coming. And I look, looking forward to coaching them, having them part of the team. And, uh, and all three of them are weapons. And so it's, it's going to be fun. Thanks, Coach. You good? Yeah, I really, the, the, it's, I, Desi's block was the play of the game, right? I mean, that, they would go up five, I think, on that. He blocks it, goes out of bounds. We get an under OB and uh, defense, and then we, we get a stop, you know? And um, I thought that was the play of the game for me. And, and, and Desi Seals, man, he just does whatever you need him to do to win the game. And he never pouts and he never complains. And I mean, he says all the right things in the huddles and, and he's always uplifting other guys. I, I just, yeah, it's uh, you see why he won two state championships. And he's broke out just the last few games. Do you think he's just scratching the surface of what he can do this season? Yeah, uh, I mean, remember he came late, right? So he didn't get here till October. You know, and, and, you know, David is coming along, too, and he missed because he was had the visa issue. So those guys are a little bit behind the other guys, but they're going to they're gonna catch up, and uh, it's going to help us. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thank you.